A Cupra está a celebrar um ano e nós fizemos uma entrevista ao CEO da marca, Wayne Griffiths, aqui no Salão de Genebra 2019. Falamos sobre o presente e um bocadinho sobre aquilo que será o futuro desta marca de performance do grupo Volkswagen. Line. Yes. This so is a new Cooper line. This one and these. Okay. Um, th 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 they are very pretty, and that uh, that goes um, on to maybe my final question. But Your you final <laughs> question. Then we're finished. We shortcutted the interview because I I I, I was about to to ask you uh, ending this interview. If uh, after you launch accessories, sunglasses and uh, bags, yeah. if you will ever think about launching uh, uh, furniture and then <laughs> it's yeah, here. already answered yeah. this. And the, it, will this be available yep. to, to the product? We'll develop the this with a, with a company from Barcelona called Ma uh, Masset. We'll do very stylish design lamps who have lots of values that fit with Cooper. So a great cooperation partner for us. And we'd like to do most of it them in the future as well. Okay. Let's... Mm. Let's talk about the industry. Mm. Uh, I believe it's uh, the right place to do it, mm. Geneva. 2008 was excellent for Cooper. You sold uh, more than 14,000 units. Mm. It was an excellent start. Mm. You are aiming the next three to five years mm. to launch each year 30,000 units uh, per year, constantly mm. and growing, I believe. Mm. How do you plan on achieving that goal? Yeah, yeah we said that when we launched the brand uh, a year ago, that uh, by extending the product range uh, we wanted to more than double the growth of the sales that we'd achieved up to then with Cupra or Seat Cupra and we took the uh, brave decision of you know making Cupra into its own brand establishing Cupra as, a, as an individual brand that was a, an important step and to separate Cupra from Seat and not just have it as part of Seat if we want to create a, a desirability around the brand which is important so desirability around the, the, the brand logo. We decided to go for a specific brand logo. And we took that decision with Cupra Teca that we showed last year and we've just launched now. It's incredibly successful. The product, the demand for the product is huge. Uh, it's pretty much on its own in the segment. So between the mass segment and the premium segment, there's a big gap and we, we fill that excellently with uh, with, a, with a, a brand for people who have less to prove, who are less interested in expressing themselves with traditional premium symbols, much more open for something new. But it has to be stylish, it has to be unique, it has to be sophisticated, it has to have performance. So th that's working, but how do we want to achieve it? Is investing in the brand, like I said, um, not only in terms of marketing, but in terms of motorsport, because the roots of Cupra will always be in motorsport. Cupra comes from cup racing. So we will invest in the future as well with Cooper as a brand for, for motorsport with ETCR, the electric touring car uh, format that will be coming in, in, in a couple of years and where we're already developing a car for that. So that's an important inv investment for the brand together with the products. The products, obviously, we have the current Leon Cooper that's doing really well, like you said, 14,000. Cooper Taker coming on top this year. And today here we're showing the the Cupra Formentor, uh, and uh, that will come on top of that. So I'm really, really looking forward to that because the reception here has been <coughs> really huge. Yes. It's been great. And about the, the Formentor, you, um, mm. it was revealed as a concept car, um, mm. but it's uh, it, mainly its interior. It's very uh, close to a production car. So The exterior too. Yes, mm. you, you, you said so. So we, we are anxious to see it um, in the flesh. <coughs> as a production mm -hmm. car, but do you have a release date for the Formator yet? Uh, end of next year. End of next year, 2020, yep. end yep. of 2020, okay. Um, but the car the is uh, very ready, you can see the car is yes. very developed and the car is um, obviously a prototype still here, but a lot of the product decisions that needed to have been taken on the car in terms of exterior design, even the wheels, the interior design, those decisions have been made and the results of those decisions you can see here today. That design, that interior design, the, the cockpits and the... Mm -hmm. Is that a... Um, we'll see that in, in, in the future models of uh, Cupra, that uh, the infotainment is very... It's very it seems very finished. Uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, 
uh, far away from being just a concept car. No, it is very, that is, is the, the, the level and standard in terms of interior design, but in terms of quality and sophistication, particularly if you see the dashboard, the way we work with the dashboard or with the stitching, and the infotainment screen, like you say, the big 10 inch screen, that yes. will be typical of, of our Cooper models in the future. Okay. And the, unlike the Cooper Ateca, the Formentor has, um, is, it was revealed as a plug-in hybrid. Um, is, the, is there still room in the future for Cooper for uh, um, cars with only a uh, heat engine? Yeah, I certainly think so for the next years. I mean, uh, our estimations are that um, 2025, around 25%, perhaps maximum 30% of the market will be electric. I mean, 70% of the market is, will be combustion engines. So in a market which is 70% still combustion, I think by 2025, there'll still be, still be a high demand for, for combustion cars uh, that not only offer performance, but also the unique design sophistication and so on. However, I think um, obviously that the pressure on uh, with CO2 legislation mm -hmm. and taxation, the pressure on these cars will, will become more and more. And that's why we need to find solutions where we still offer performance, but also a good CO2 balance. And the best way to that is the PHEV technology, but more in a performance hybrid rather than just a plug-in hybrid. Okay. So that's what we'll be working on together with, uh, with the Volkswagen Group on coming up with them. Um, and there are good examples in the group on that, on, 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 perf on performance yes. hybrid cars. You know <laughs> yes. what I'm talking about, I think. Yes. If you um, keep a front-wheel drive version mm -hmm. of the car, uh, how far can the numbers go in a Cupra with a front-wheel car version? Or you only have four-wheel drive versions in the future uh, Cupra Leon? I think the tradition of, uh, of Cooper has been having uh, the most powerful front-wheel drive cars in the market. I mean, some, some of our routes, uh, we, we offer both. And we've offered manual gearboxes and DSG um, gearboxes too. So, so that's uh, the key? I think so. I, I think it's best to keep. I think we have a, a, a big fan, a big uh, group of fans who, who like that. Yes. I personally prefer the four-wheel drive version, if I'm honest. And manual or automatic? Um, uh, and I like the uh, with a good uh, good DSG gearbox the, 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 that is fast. I think very it's probably fast. It has to be very fast <laughs> on the shift, but that's probably the best combination. But your your question on how important is Cupra for Leon or Leon for Cupra? I think it's, uh, Leon for Cupra is really important because it's obviously the base of our success up to now. We saw forty thousand in last year, um, and in the future, I think that the Cupra mix within the whole Leon range could reach anywhere up to uh, certainly more than 10%. We have some markets today where we're already at 30%. If you look at Switzerland or Mexico, Luxembourg, Germany at 10%, 15%, I think. We have specific versions for Switzerland of the Cooper. They are the, the, with a partnership. Ah, with, a, with Apt. Yeah, but the most with powerful Apt, one. The, the one powerful. that nobody gets, only them. <laughs> the Swiss, but it's also offered in Germany too. Yes. And absolutely. you see today here at the show, if you have time afterwards, go and see Apt. They've got a Cooper Ateca on the stand. In Apt? Yeah. Oh, okay. How many horsepower? About 350. Mm. Um, and Sorry, to back to the Leon. Um, so of the course. Leon, the Leon in the Cooper for Leon in Port, but um, also Leon for Cooper because it's uh, the base of our success. and. Obviously, we've, when we do launch the new, new Leon family, then a Cupra will be an important part of that. And uh, th there is a car that uh, um, it seemed to be a, a, a close deal to many people when you launch the Cooper brand. It never passed the production, but only concept. It's a very important car. Which one? <laughs> the Cupra Ibiza. Uh, yeah. And uh, we will see a Cupra Ibiza in the future. Maybe in a facelift version of the actual model? We showed a design car at uh, the launch of the Cupra brand last year. Yes. In Terramar, do you remember the, yes. the Cupra Vita? Yes. To see what the reaction was like. The reaction was good. Whether that is the right segment to launch Cupra high performance in the, in the hot hatch segment, I, I have my doubts because the segment is, is under pressure. Mm -hmm. And if we see how the, the crossover SUV segment is growing, so we'd rather bet on, on growing uh, segments. So, uh, 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 Cupra Aurora? <laughs> <laughs> it's something I would like to. I mean, in the A0 segment, in the smaller car segment, to come up with a viable, feasible business case for Cupra is more, more difficult than, than, than in uh, Leon, Ateca, and cars like that. Um, but we haven't given up yet. So we, we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how about electrification? Because um, you have put a lot, of, a lot of effort in the e-racer. Yeah. 100% electric. You've uh, learned a lot, I believe. Yeah. 
and uh, we will see a fully electrical uh, uh, performance car in the future from the Cooper, Cooper brand. I mean, I'd love to get the um, the ETCR car, the the, the, the the Cooper Eraser, the, the electric Cooper Eraser on the street. I mean, if we could do a street version of that car, but the car's made for the track, but who ne you never know. It's very hard to, to deal with all the, the needs of a car like that. Yeah, and the homologation, and the, the batteries, and cooling yes. the batteries. Cooling, and, especially uh, cooling. Especially cooling, you're right. Um, but obviously on the street, you would drive the car differently than on the track. Uh, but I think at some point in the future, definitely we will need a, a fully electric performance car from Cooper. Whether that will be on the base of a, of a racing car, sports car, or the base of another concept, we'll we see. We see. Okay. How about autonomous driving? This is a very um, uh, mm. important theme these days for mm. the industry. Everybody talks about it. Yeah. Uh, all the major manufacturers mm. are talking about it and the Cooper is a driver oriented mm. brand. Yeah. How do you deal with that as a driver oriented brand? Offer the maximum amount of um, driver safety assistance that make it safe but it will still be a car that people want to drive. Uh, Cooper's role is not to um, um, take over the driving for, for, for the driver. I think that's more something that we would look to put in the Seat El Bon. Yes. Uh, with, uh, the second level of autonomous driving is planned for that. But in Cooper would not be on my priority of list what needs to be in a Cooper. The Cooper, the Cooper car needs to be safe, have all the driving safety systems that are necessary, but the car still needs to be fun to drive for the driver. We will see in the future, or we will be able to see a uh, micromobility oriented product from Cooper with two or four wheels. I, I could imagine it if it fulfills the, 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 the brand positioning and brand claims. It would have to be something very unique in terms of design. It would have to be something very special in terms of sophistication and quality and, and, and touch and feel. And would have to be fast or performance driven. If it, it fulfills fulfill those three requirements, yes. So uh, okay. if we were to do an e-scooter, it would have to be one of the fastest, so the coolest open looking. I'm open, I'm open to it as long as it fits with the brand positioning, yeah and genuinely fits in terms of product, not just marketing. Because it's, um, you, you, do you believe that the future of Cooper uh, stays on its identity? Yeah, and that we don't do anything that's against the identity or is a compromise. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Okay. Bye. Yeah.